Algebra 2 Honors, Lesson 14.3, Trig Identities. These are puzzles. You're going to be taking things and simplifying them. This is a pre-calculus type lesson. In calculus, you need to find the integrals, derivatives of things, and it's very challenging to do. If you can simplify things, it makes your life a lot easier. Uh, many students come back and tell me, wow, I really wish I would paid more attention during trig identities in pre-calculus. So today's lesson, honestly, truthfully, is not that hard. What's tangent of theta equal to? Uh, you might remember tangent of theta is equal to sine of theta over cosine of theta. And a lot of people will have a lot of reasons why that is. I just pick an angle. This would be the opposite. This would be the hypotenuse. This would be the adjacent to angle A. Say sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which just equals opposite over adjacent, which is what tangent is. So there's lots of different ways to quote unquote prove it, but it's pretty obvious that it's a identity. You need to memorize it. Tangent, sine over cosine, most of you already have. What about sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta? And why do we write it that way? Now, why don't we write it as sine of theta squared? Well, this one, we don't know if we're doing this or if we're doing this or what's going on. So we write it and say it, sine squared theta. It just means sine of theta. That's all it means. is the same thing. So put them in your calculator and you'll find that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta always equals 1, no matter what angle you put in. And if you do the same as last time, And do this, you'll get O over H, opposite of hypotenuse squared, plus adjacent over H squared, which is just O squared plus A squared over H squared. And using the Pythagorean theorem, O squared plus A squared equals, equals H squared, you'll get one every time. One of the most important identities you'll ever work with. So definitely memorize sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. It's going to pop up a lot. I do not have these memorized that we're about to derive. I just don't. I quickly derive them in my head every time I need them. If you can memorize them, it's probably not a bad idea. But when we divide them all, we get 1 plus cosine over sine is cotangent squared theta. 1 over sine is cosecant squared theta. So often written like this. can also divide everything by cosine squared theta. And you get tangent squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. These are the three main identities. They get used a lot. Again, I try not to memorize them. I try and derive them on the fly with my head. And as a reminder, secant is 1 over cosine 
and I've deliberately not written my say it is for this one. We start to do this just to save time when we have these big complicated problems. Other than this, I'll be writing them down almost every time. You can write these either way. I just wrote it as 1 over cotangent. But to be consistent, 1 over tangent equals cotangent. Uh, just writing the thetas every time gets tiresome when you're doing very big, long problems, which you will in the next lesson, but not today. And we actually solve this problem by saying, oh, we're in the second quadrant, draw it up and over, and sine is 3, hypotenuse is 5, and therefore that's negative 4, therefore cosine equals negative 4 over 5. And that's actually my preferred method of solving it. But another entirely different way to solve it is using an identity. And this is just practice getting used to it. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Sine of theta is 3 fifths, square it. 9 twenty fifths. Subtract from both sides. Take square root of both sides. Cosine of theta equals plus or minus 4 fifths. We're in the second quadrant. Therefore, we take the negative value, because we know cosine is negative in the second quadrant. And we get the same answer. Which way is easier? I think the first way, drawing the triangle, is much easier. A lot of people like the second way. It's more formulaic. You can just plug it in and chug it out. Doesn't matter to me. For today's purposes, I'd like you to do it using the identities. So here's what I really like about teaching identities. We get to write some, some cool problems, and they're just puzzles. You just have to learn to be good at puzzles. Hopefully you have that kind of inquisitive mind. So this is going to simplify, and we don't know what it's going to simplify to. So 1 over sine of theta times cosine of theta. I just rewrote that one. Rewrote that one. I'm going to rewrite this one. And then we say, oh, look at this. What a surprise. Cancel, 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 cancel. That's going to simplify to 1. So, today's very simple. Next lesson, much more challenging. The hint for problem solving is write all of them in terms of sine and cosine. It's one of many hints that works. Sine and cosine is easier to deal with. Let's try another one. Do you want to write them all as sine as cosine? I do. I don't like cosecant and all that. 1 over sine squared theta minus cosine squared theta over sine squared theta all over cosine of theta. And this one's pretty challenging. First time you see it, you're going to do the classic, you know, what? what? What just happened? So be prepared. Now, just dealing with the top. We have a common denominator, so we can write that. Hope that works for you. If it doesn't, don't know what to tell you. We still have the cosine of theta on the bottom. Now I'm going to go over here. And this 1 minus cosine squared theta jumps up in my head and says, this looks familiar. Pardon the interruption. This looks familiar to me. I'm going to subtract cosine of squared theta from both sides. I'm going to get sine squared theta 
equals 1 minus cosine squared theta. So this whole top here can get substituted. They cancel. Gives me 1 over cosine of theta. And don't ask me why. We like to write it as secant theta. We like to have no fractions in our final answers. So this is another hint. Use an identity to simplify. And one last one. No idea where this one's going. I think I do. I'm going to factor out a sine theta. 1 plus cotangent squared theta. And unless I'm mistaken, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Divide by sine squared theta sine squared theta, and I know I already did this, but like I said, I don't have it memorized. That's 1 plus cotangent squared theta, and that equals 1 over sine squared theta. I could write it as cosecant theta, but you'll see why in a second. Sine of theta times 1 over sine squared theta equals 1 over sine of theta equals cosecant of theta. So another hint for problem solving is to factor. And sometimes I'll tell you to distribute, so it's one of those catch-22 things, darned if you do, darned if you don't. So factor and then look to substitute. Going to get a lot of practice on these. The next lesson is all practice and get some very complex problems. But that's a good start. Good luck.